These are the videos you're looking for. You have time to sit and watch them. Welcome to Empire TV and this week's episode of Modeling with me, Darth Vader. After a hard day fighting the rebel scum and hacking at them with my trusty lightsaber, I like nothing more than to get to work on the bench to unwind and have a brew. I like my brew on the dark side. See what I did there. Today we'll be looking at a kit that is very close to my heart. A model of my very own TIE fighter. Nicely boxed by Revel with this handsome fellow on the front. I have to say that. He's family, you know. Lovely box art all round. and various bits of information, as you would expect. Ah yes, I fondly remember my battles in the trenches of the first Death Star. Wow! Pew pew! Ooh, ha, ha. I totally had that X-Wing. Damn that smuggler and his flying pancake. Anyway, over to the bench and let's see what's in the box. Do not change this channel, or I'll force choke you. Just kidding. Or am I? Thank you to Lord Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith, for that introduction. And uh, welcome to the unboxing of the Star Wars Revel 1 121st scale Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. And we'll have a look at the box art, very nice box art. This is the modern one with Kylo Ren on the cover there and the Disney logo in the bottom. As you know, the rights are now owned by Disney for the Star Wars franchise. And very nice cover art on here with, um, with the Death Star and the fighter in motion. And this is replicated on the sides and the ends of the box accordingly. A little bit of information underneath. And then on the back, we have a picture of the actual model, the sprues, the details such as the opening canopy, and a bit of information about the level detail and, uh, and items required to complete the kit, including paint coats down here, which is nice. This is not one of the pre-coloured kits like, like you would get with the Bandai kits. So we'll open the box and take a look at the contents. Inside the box we have one clear poly bag with all the parts, we have a safety information leaflet and we have some very nicely printed instructions with a nice colour um, cover and back piece showing the colour scheme. We'll just have a quick look at these. Now these appear to be in a booklet form initially but they are in fact two separate sheets of um, of sort of A3 sized paper um, and there are some little, 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 which when unfolded will fold into a sheet of A4 sized in a booklet format. So we have Darth Vader's TIE Fighter and a bit of information regarding that. 
the skill level which is a level three presumably this is um, that's medium difficulty we have some informational pictures read the instructions make sure you have your tools um, little helpful tips like using rubber bands to hold fuse large halves together uh, give them a wash, cut them off the sprues properly, stir your paint, etc. So it's quite good for a beginner, for somebody who's new to all this. Um, some nice little detailed pictures there. Uh, some information on here regarding the small pictures that will appear on the build instructions so that you can tell whether you should glue, paint, etc. or decal or what have you. And then some paint colour codes inside here. Some sprue parts, so this shows you all the bits that you should have in your kit, which is always very handy. I like that on a model kit instructions. Not all of them do this, uh, but I do like it when they do because you can see immediately from a glance whether the kit is complete, especially if you've bought it second hand, um, as I have in this case second hand and already opened. And then here, over two pages, we have the instructions. All very straightforward with all the colour call outs. Uh, it comes with a little Darth Vader figure, which you can see by my thumb up there. All the relevant colour call outs and um, even showing the details for the inside of the TIE Fighter, which you don't get to see in great detail in the Star Wars movie, in the original Star Wars movie, so that's quite handy. And, and then on the back we have the sort of overall colour call outs for the completed model, which is quite nice. So we'll pop those aside. Unfortunately there's obviously a missing decal in here because here is the decal cover sheet which fell out of the instructions but with no decal so I'm not sure what that should be. If anybody has one of these kits and can tell me I'd appreciate it. Inside the bag which has been opened already but it is all complete because I had a quick look. We have four sprues. Three sprues of a grey blue plastic with the body parts and the wings and then one clear sprue with the window for the top hatch and the front window which goes on the front of the TIE Fighter itself. All very nicely moulded, very sharply moulded, nice clear plastic parts, very good, a, a quick dip in clear should see those looking marvellous. And here we have the two wing parts, now hopefully you'll be able to see that these are quite well detailed with the solar panels um, in a rough finish so um, masking those off may be fun but, uh, but we'll see how we go with that hopefully it shouldn't be too complicated the details are raised well enough to mask and cut along the lines so hopefully that should uh, that should be quite good and this will also um, weather quite well because there's quite a few nice little raised details on the edges here the inside of the wings um, only the details on the edges because there's a plate which fits over here that the body halves fit into so we have the body halves on one sprue here Darth Vader's TIE Fighter being unusual in that it has a rear portion which uh, the standard TIE Fighter is just the ball with the two arms so uh, I, always, I was always a big fan of this one with it being a little bit different and um, minimal detail under here but that's because the interior portion actually builds up as a se separate cockpit which sits inside here so, um, so you don't really need a great deal of detail inside there but again nice detail, very sharp, sharp moulding, nice panel lines um, not too deep but deep enough to, to hold a pin wash and, uh, and a bit of weathering and some very nice raised detail throughout on here and then the final sprue is all the little bits and pieces we've got the Darth Vader figure just here and the cockpit seat these are the infills for the, uh, the spars leading out to the wings and uh, the flight yoke and portions of the cockpit all over here so I move this across so you can see that the top hatch which is articulated uh, looking at the instructions so you can actually open and close the hatch that's quite interesting and then the infill panels for the inside of the wings and it's quite nice that you get these separate because you can do sort of detail painting and a bit of weathering and what have you before you glue them in place if you so desire so we'll see how we go with that one and 
that's it. It's uh, there's not much to it really. This it's quite a quite a simple looking kit, but very well moulded in terms of giving you the ability to to weather it, apply pin washers and dry brushing and that kind of thing to give it a bit uh, a bit more realism rather than the uber clean version that you see just here on the front of the instructions. While that looks quite nice, we all know that, um, that one of the good things about the Star Wars ships is that they have real world sort of hard use weathering, which I always liked rather than the super, super shiny ones. Um, for example, in the new uh, episodes one, two and three, the ships all looked far too shiny and keen and gleaming and just frankly didn't look right. The original Star Wars series, I think, got it fantastically right with uh, with real world weathering you know they'd get muck street they're flying out through the detritus of space through asteroid fields and goodness knows what else and uh, they're in battles so you know they would have battle scars they would have streaks of muck and what have you now admittedly a ship of the empire would be cleaner than most and especially darth vader's ship for example um when it's not actually out on a mission but i do want to make this one look a little bit used at least so there's the unboxing review. Uh, it's a nice little kit, a very nice little kit, and not a particularly expensive one either, uh, brand new as it turns out when I did a little bit of searching afterwards. And um, I'm very much looking forward to building this one. But for the time being, I need to get back onto the Escort Mark 1, and we will see you um, a very nice little kit altogether, and I'm very much looking forward to building this one. It's not often I do something sci-fi related, but I've always been a fan of, uh, of Star Wars and Star Trek and all that kind of thing. And, uh, and I do like the models used in the films, so I'm really looking forward to building this one. So hopefully uh, you'll, you'll join me for that one, um, whether sci-fi is your thing or not. And, uh, and we will see you when we start the build videos. In the meantime, however, I must get back to the Airfix Mark I Escort. Back for a very quick update. Just as I was about to put the kit back in the box, wedged at the bottom of the box was this, the, um, the decal sheet that I assumed was missing, which contains a decal for the front uh, glasswork, um, which I will try in lieu of masking and painting the framework to see how well that settles with Microsol and see if it looks good. And these little red dots which are either the pulse engines or the lasers at the front, I'm not sure which, but the decals will make that clear I'm sure. Thank you for watching and if you like this please, um, please hit the subscribe button and check for new updates. The Jedi Council thanks you for watching this video. That was very good. You can go and get a cup of tea.